Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well today. Today's video is gonna be a very basic but detailed makeup tutorial for beginners and I'm gonna be sharing some tips and suggestions for those of us who are in that 40 plus age range. I'm gonna be doing a lot of explaining things and demoing so this video might be kind of lengthy but I am gonna be putting timestamps in my description box if that's gonna be more helpful for you. I'm gonna be approaching this assuming that the person watching the video has never applied makeup before so I'm not going to be doing my normal routine today this is how I would instruct someone who has never applied makeup before how to go about getting started with the process just so that they can get like a comfort level with doing like a basic full face of makeup so with that being said if you've been watching other tutorials which you should you should be watching like a handful of different ones just to see how people do things differently it will give you a better idea of what may or may not work for you but if you have been watching other other tutorials you might notice that I'm skipping over some parts of what might be considered like a standard makeup tutorial and that's because I'm focusing just on the steps that I think are part of like a basic full face of makeup and we're focusing on that word basic for today and then once you do this tutorial a few times and you keep practicing with it once you get to the point where you feel comfortable with what we're doing today you can build upon this and then you can create your own makeup routine that's going to suit your personal needs I'm also going to be giving y'all some product recommendations as we go through. All of them are from the drugstore just because my thinking is when you're first starting out with makeup, you might as well stick with some of the cheaper products just to practice on those and play around with those. But that's not to say that cheaper products are cheap in quality because there's a whole lot of very high quality, very good performing products at the drugstore. So everything that we're going to be using is on the affordable side today. I also pick products that I think are very inclusive in terms of skin tone type especially for those of us who may be getting a little bit older but no matter what your skin type is you should be able to use the products that I'm going to be recommending and I also think that they're very inclusive in terms of shade range because I want everybody no matter what your complexion is to be able to have an option from the products that I'm going to be talking about today okay so with all of that being said let's jump right in so let's start with talking about brushes and sponges first. For a beginner, I think the easiest thing to do is just to get a brush set. I think that's a lot easier than getting individual brushes. I started out with a brush set from BH Cosmetics, but I have since given that away. So unfortunately, I can't show that to y'all. But I will be linking some other brush sets from BH Cosmetics in my description box, as well as a couple of options from e.l.f. Cosmetics, because I think e.l.f. makes really good affordable brushes too. But I would say just get a full brush set instead of worrying about trying to do individual brushes right now and I also think you should get a sponge to start out with and I would suggest the Sonia Kashuk sponge which you can find at Target this sponge is only five dollars and I believe you can get two for seven or maybe it's two for ten but I think it's two for seven but these sponges are really nice and squishy and I think they have a really good size and they come in different sizes and different shapes as well L'Oreal also has a really nice sponge as well as real technique but I think the best ones from the drugstore are the Sonia Kashuk sponges. So we're going to jump right into foundation. I'm not going to be doing primer today because number one, I don't think it's necessary to have primer on your face just to learn how to blend out foundation on your face. Number two, even for people who are pretty comfortable with putting makeup on, I always think it's best to try out a new foundation without a primer the first time that you use it anyway. I think it's best to see like how that foundation is going to work on your skin because you may decide that you don't even need a primer to pair with that foundation foundation or if you feel like you want one or if you need one at least you'll be able to tell how that foundation is going to work on your skin and then you'll know what type of primer to pair with it but primarily I just don't think you need a primer just to learn and practice how to blend out foundation so with that being said we're going right into foundation now foundation is just what it sounds like it's the foundation of all of your makeup so that's why usually not always but usually people start out with foundation first so I'm going to be using the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Makeup today and I chose this particular foundation for a number of reasons. Number one, it has a very natural finish so no matter what your skin type is, whether you have dry, oily, combo skin, for those of you who have normal skin, no matter what your skin type is, this foundation should work pretty well on your skin. For those of us who are a little older 
and we may have certain things like maybe some fine lines, some wrinkles, maybe some texture that we're dealing with. This foundation should do really well because it has a natural and also a skin-like finish too. This foundation is also buildable and I think that's another good aspect for someone who is starting out with makeup because it's nice to have a foundation where you can play around with the different coverage levels on your face because if you've never tried foundation before, you just may not know what coverage level is best for you. So this one you can build up from medium to full coverage. So you'll put on one layer, it'll give you a nice medium coverage. You can decide to stop right there or if you feel like you want more coverage, you can put a little bit more on to get more coverage. There are some foundations where just one layer will just start you right out with full coverage, but I feel like if you have a foundation where you have like a varying level of coverage, it makes the foundation more versatile. And then you can decide down the line what type or what level of coverage is best for you. This foundation comes in 45 shades, so it's very, very inclusive. That's a very impressive shade range, especially for a drugstore foundation. And all of the shades have different undertones. So for instance, I am in the shade C6. The C is for cool, but shade number six also has W6 for warm and N6 for neutral. Now, if you don't know what your undertone is, or if you don't even know like what the term undertone means, don't worry about that right now because this foundation can actually teach you what your undertone is. So you may end up having to try like two or three different shades before you get the right one. But when you do get the right one, you're gonna know because when you put it on your face, it's just gonna look like your skin. So when you find a shade that you think really matches you very well, whatever undertone that foundation has is most likely going to be what your undertone is. Now, when you're matching the foundation to decide what shade is right for you, some people like to match to their face, some people match to their neck, some people match to their chest. I personally match to my face, but I think my face down to my chest is pretty much all one shade. Some people have their, their neck and their chest, it may be darker than their face, so it makes sense that they would want to shade match down here as opposed to using their face. Just remember, wherever you're going to do the shade matching, at just make sure that that's where you test it out at obviously so if you're going to shade match to your chest that's where you want to blend out some of the foundation to see how seamlessly it blends in but I think that's a very personal preference in terms of where you want to use your shade match but just make sure that that's where you're doing the testing if that makes sense okay so to apply the foundation so just remember when we go through this we're not going for perfection today we're just trying to like get comfortable with this go for a test run just try it out and just see you know what happens so if it doesn't look perfect at the end of the day don't worry about it because the more and more you do this the better you're gonna get so I'm gonna start off with shaking this foundation up you always want to shake up new foundations or even if it's not new if it's just been sitting around for a little bit and it's been a long time since you've used it just shake it up a little bit just to get like all the juices flowing and everything the one downside about this foundation is that it doesn't have an applicator which that can be kind of annoying. So with this one, we're just gonna have to use our finger to apply it. So I'm just gonna dip it out and I'm just gonna evenly apply it all over my face. I'm also going to put some of this foundation on my neck too so that I'll remember to blend out down there. And it may not be exactly even on the face, but that's fine. Okay, so I think that's pretty evenly distributed for now. So the first time that you blend out foundation, I would suggest using both of your tools just to see which one you might like best. So I'm gonna do a brush on one side and a sponge on the other. This is a very personal preference, so I would say just you know play around with both just to see which one you might like the best. Some people are exclusive to brushes or sponges for foundation, and then you have other people that may switch up based on the product, so you're just gonna have to make that decision for yourself as you go down the line but I would say first time around just do a test run with both of your tools so I'm gonna start out with my brush one thing I forgot to mention because I don't have my um, the starter brush kit that I started out with I just pulled out some of my affordable makeup brushes but they're not from a set but just make sure you check the links in the description box if you're interested in getting a full brush set so on this side I'm gonna blend out with the brush don't worry about like where to start blending 
everything out first. I would say just kind of like go where the wind takes you and just see what happens. I have gotten used to blending foundation out on my cheeks first because that's where I have a lot of old acne scarring. So I guess just naturally that's where I want to cover up first. But I like to blend out with a brush by kind of like stippling it in. Some people do like to buff it in, so you can try both of those techniques too to see which one is more comfortable for you. But I like to just kind of like pat and stipple as I'm blending it out. And just make sure when you get down here to like your jawline that you're dragging the foundation down to your neck. And you just want to keep blending it out until you feel like all of it is blended and you might be looking at it thinking that you didn't do a good job with blending but that's fine because we're just you know going for a test run today I'm also gonna put a little bit of this over my eyelid just to kind of cover that area up as well and then on the other side of my face I'm going to use the sponge. Now the sponge was not designed to be used to like buff something into the skin so for the sponge you definitely want to do like a patting motion to blend this out but I'm just going to pat all over the face on this side until I feel like everything is nice and blended. So your face should kind of look something like this after you finish blending out your foundation. So if you feel like this is not enough coverage for you, because on my face I'm getting like medium coverage, if you feel like you want more coverage, then you can just repeat that step that we just did, putting the foundation evenly across your face and then blending it out again and it'll give you extra coverage. So let's go with this. This is a good enough coverage for me, but for the sake of practicing, let's just put on a little bit more so we can practice building the foundation up. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did. I'm just gonna evenly distribute it all over. And then I'm just blending out the same way I did the first time. And as you can see on my cheeks, a lot more stuff got covered up because I'm building on top of that first layer. Okay, the foundation is on, so let's move on to concealer. So concealer is a two-in-one product for a lot of people. We use it to conceal or cover something up, but a lot of us also use it to add some brightness to our face. So your concealer should have a little bit more coverage than your foundation because it has to be more of a fuller coverage product to conceal or cover up whatever you're trying to cover. But when you choose a shade for your concealer, it should be one or two shades lighter than your foundation so that you can also get the brightness from it. So I'm going to be using the NYX HD concealer for today and I use the shade tan in this one. So let me just show you guys the foundation shade versus the concealer shade and you'll be able to see that the concealer is just a little bit lighter. This particular foundation, this comes in 25 shades and they have a nice range from light to dark. They also have a nice range in terms of undertone. So when you decide, when you figure out like what your undertone is, you want to stick with that same undertone for your concealer as well. This concealer is very emollient so when you apply it it's going to kind of help to make your skin feel like a little softer in the areas that you applied it. So that's really good for those of us who are kind of like getting a little older. We want our skin to always stay softer. However I'm also going to give you a second recommendation for a concealer. You can also try the e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer. This one also comes in 25 shades and it has a nice range in complexion as well as undertone. This one will give you a little bit more coverage than the um, NYX concealer. However, I like the formula of the NYX concealer better, but this one will definitely give you more coverage. The reason I'm going in with NYX, so for those of you who may be able to use me as a shade reference, I don't think that e.l.f. does a good job with undertones for people who are in my complexion range who have a cool undertone but I don't think there's a lot of people who fall into that category so if you feel like you have like you're my complexion but you feel like you have like a warm or neutral undertone you should be okay with finding a shade in this one but for elf I actually have to mix 
two shades together because I have a cool undertone. Both of these are cool, but they don't really have one in between. And sometimes the cool undertones, they just come off kind of sort of grayish, I find, with e.l.f. Um, concealers and foundations. But for those of you who can find a shade match, this would be a good option too, but I'm going to be going in with NYX for today. This one has a much smaller applicator too, so it does take a little bit longer to apply. But let me show you guys the difference in the applicators. So you can see how small the NYX one is compared to e.l.f., so it is going to take me a little bit longer to apply the e.l.f. one. The NYX one rather. So when we apply concealer, we want to focus it mainly on the center of our face. We want to conceal and brighten our under eye area and then other areas of the face we want to add a little brightness. So you want to concentrate the majority of your concealer on the under eye. So just bear with me because this is going to take me a minute to apply right here. And then I'm also going to apply some of this on my forehead area I'm gonna drag it down to the top part of the like in between my brows I'm also gonna put a little bit on my chin and then I like to put some on the corners of my mouth also because I do have some darkness right there now the under eye area I put more concealer there because like I said we want to conceal and add brightness right here the chin the chin the forehead and the chin area we want to add brightness, but we don't necessarily need more coverage in these two areas. So I just don't have as much concealer right there. So again, personal preference, you can decide if you prefer to blend out your concealer with a brush or a sponge. I usually go in with a brush for mine. So I'm just going to take my same foundation brush and I'm just going to blend right on top of that. And I'm going to blend on the chin and the forehead area first just so that I'm letting the concealer on my under eye area sit for just a second that'll help to give me a little more coverage because letting the concealer sit is going to help like thicken up the formula a little bit and it'll be a bit more opaque when I go and blend it out. Now for the corners of my mouth and for my under eye I'm going to go in with another brush this one is just a bit more detailed so I'm going to just pat it out as I blend it. I like to do a patting motion with my concealer just so that I'm blending it out but I'm not necessarily moving the product around a lot. I want the product to stay like right where I have it. And then the same thing with the under eye area. I'm just going to pat like right on top of this concealer here. And then after I get most of the concealer blended out right on this immediate under eye area where I want most of the coverage to go. Then I'm going to take the residual product and I'm going to drag it down to like the end of my nose and then I'm dragging it out. So dragging it out this way will give us like a nice lifted effect in this area. But also I'm concentrating my blending right here because I want most of my concealer to stay here so that it can give me the most coverage right here. But here along this line, I want some brightness, but I don't necessarily need extra coverage right here. So especially for those of us who are in like that 40 plus age range, we want to always think about less is more. And that's not to say that just because we're a little older that we can't wear like full coverage stuff, but we always want to think about just only adding what we need, how much we need to our face in order to get the desired look instead of like just packing stuff onto our face. And then I'm also going to take some of that residual product and also just hit my eyelid just to blend that out just a little bit. So this is what my face looks like after I've blended out my foundation and concealer. And again, if you're looking at your face right now and you feel like you didn't do a good job at blending, please don't worry about that because we are just practicing for today. So I'm going to go back in with my foundation brush and I'm going to go over the areas where my concealer and my foundation are meeting each other. And I'm just doing a light patting motion in those areas. And this is just really to help fuse those areas together so that we don't have have any like harsh lines we don't want to be able to tell where the concealer stops and the foundation starts we want everything to just blend you know one into the other 
And now we're going to move on to setting powder and setting powder is meant to set your makeup in place so that it stays where you put it and it also helps you to be able to blend out other products on top of it. So a lot of people like to use one powder for their concealer, especially their under eye, and then another powder for all over their face. That's what I usually do. But for today, just to get started, I think you can just use one powder for your whole face and call it a day. So we're going to be using the Maybelline Fit Me powder and this is the Maybelline fit me loose finishing powder and I'm going to be using the shade light so when I hold this up against my face you can clearly tell that the color of the powder is a lot lighter than the shade of my face however this one blends out pretty much transparent so if you get you definitely want to get a shade that's closest to your skin tone to do this but even if it's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker it should still pretty much blend out transparent on your face now I think it's best to blend out the under eye area with a damp sponge so you can use your same foundation sponge and just use the other side of it that doesn't have foundation on it some people like to blend out their under eye concealer with a brush but again that's something that you'll decide as you you know go along but I'm gonna be using a damp sponge for today so I just poured some of my setting powder into the lid here and I'm just gonna take some of that powder on my damp sponge and if you feel like you picked up too much just pat some of it off on the back of your hand and then you're just going to pat this right over the under eye area and then you're also going to apply it on top of anywhere else on your face where you've applied the concealer i'm just picking up a little bit more off the back of my hand to hit my forehead area and then I'm gonna take some more of the powder from the lid, but this time I'm using a fluffy brush. I'm just gonna pick up some of that powder on the brush, that's about how much I have. And then I'm just gonna pat over the rest of my face. And then if I feel like I put on too much, I'm just gonna dust it off. Depending on your skin type, some of you may decide that you don't want to set your face. Like if you have like really dry skin, you might decide that you just don't want to add like extra powder and that's fine too. But that's another one of those things that you'll decide, you know, as you go along. So another big decision that you're going to have to make at some point is when to do your brows. I normally do my brows after I put on foundation and concealer. Some of you might feel more comfortable starting off with your brows. That's fine too. If you feel like that's what you want to do then you would just do what I'm about to do first and then go in with your foundation and concealer now a lot of people prefer to use brow pencils I like using brow powders and I actually think powders are easier than pencils I think the only reason why more people aren't using powders is because they just never tried to use one before I ended up using powders because I ran out of a pencil and then I just had to resort to a powder because that was all I had left and I've been using powders ever since so to do my brow I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit and this comes in two different shades but I don't know what the name of the shade is that I have but it's the darker one and as you can see I've been using this stuff like crazy. One thing that might be considered a downside though to using a powder as opposed to a pencil is that you will have to get another brush to use um, powder whereas if you're going to be using a pencil you're going to use the pencil obviously but if you do want to try using a powder you want to get a spoolie this is the brush that I use it has a spoolie on one end and then it has a very detailed brush on the other end so you're going to need a, a brush that looks similar to this okay so all I'm going to do is I'm dipping into my powders I usually just mix these two together all I'm doing is just following the natural direction of my hair growth up here and I'm just filling in those sparse areas. The first time that you do your brows and maybe even like the hundredth time that you do them, you may not like the way that they come out, but you will get better each time you do it. But just know that your brows shouldn't look exactly the same. And again, for the first time out, you know, we're just practicing. So you just wanna practice just following the natural direction of your hair growth and just blend the powder in and try not to go over where your hairs naturally stop. 
Okay, my brows are all done and I know a lot of people like to clean up their brows with concealer to make them look really nice and precise and that's definitely something that you can incorporate into your own routine. I don't like doing that because I think it makes my brows look a, a lot more natural when I just leave them like this and it's definitely not necessary just to try to like get the hang of doing your brows. I feel like you should practice just filling them in and then move on to trying to like get them to look really, really nice and precise. So I'm going to leave my brows like this for today and we're going to move on to blush. So blush adds just like a natural flush of color to your face and some of you may decide as you go along that it's just not necessary for you. But for me personally, I usually put on blush no matter how I'm doing my makeup. Even if I'm doing like a very, very minimal look, I just feel like blush is one of those necessities like in a full face of makeup. So today we're gonna be using the e.l.f. blush palette. This palette comes in two different options, light and dark. It might be medium and dark, but I'm gonna be using the one for dark. I feel like with palettes, they're really good for beginners because you're getting options. You may not know what blush color looks right on you when you first start out. So using a palette like this will give you a lot of options and you're getting four different blushes and this palette only costs $8. Now my rule of thumb for blush is to go with a color that's the opposite of what your undertone is. So for me, I have a cool pink undertone. So I usually go for blushes that have more of like an orangey tint to it. So whenever I use this, this palette this is the blush that I normally go for if you have a warm like yellow or golden undertone then you might prefer to use like more of a pink tone blush but I feel like when you use a blush that's the opposite of your undertone it kind of helps like balance everything out so that's why I usually go with like more orangey like peachy type blushes so I'm gonna be using this one for today I actually don't have a brush on the affordable side that I would use for blush so I'm just gonna go in with the one that I normally would would use but most people know that blush is going to go on your cheek when you're just starting out I don't think you have to worry too much about being precise about where you put the blush but for me moving the blush back a little bit it kind of helps to give everything that lifted effect and I feel like it helps balance out the center of my face a little bit better when I don't have the blush like so close to the center of my face so if you're just starting out I would say just you know put it on your cheeks and just see how you like it because if you don't like where you place the blush today the next time you do this you can just change it up and try another location so for me I'm just gonna put it kind of like right here kind of like right behind the apples of my cheeks and I'm just gonna pat it in. Just like with your complexion products, you wanna go light when you apply your blush because you can build it up. If you feel like you wanna add a little bit more, you can always go on top of it, but just don't be heavy handed so that you're not accidentally putting too much on. Okay, so that's pretty much it with the blush and then we're gonna move on to bronzer. Now bronzer is meant to add like warmth and a subtle glow and some dimension back into your face because when we put foundation and concealer on, it does kind of flatten us out just a little bit. We do have some variances in our face right now because the concealer is giving us a little bit of brightness and then the perimeter of our face is just a little bit darker than that, but we still don't have like that natural like dimension that we would normally have in our face and the warmth as well. So the bronzer is going to bring that back for us. So I'm gonna be using the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and my shade is Endless Summer. I like this particular shade because it's a very subtle bronzer on me, but this blush does come in a pretty good uh, shade range. But if you're like maybe two shades or more darker than me, you will probably have an issue with finding a bronzer at the drugstore. They just aren't out there like that at the drugstore. So I am gonna give you another option. You can also try the Makeup Revolution Splendor Ultra Matte bronzer and I have the shade medium and I actually think that this one is just a little bit darker than me but they have a lot I think they have like four other shades that are actually darker than this so if you have like a really deep skin tone you might be able to find a bronzer in this line that will actually work for you but just generally speaking there aren't a whole lot of bronzers at the drugstore for deeper skin tones so when we apply bronzer we're going to focus on the areas of the face where we want like a natural subtle glow 
low to the face. So most people put bronzer on their cheeks, their forehead, and then some people put it along their jawline. So we're gonna start with the cheek area. And to know where to place the bronzer, you're basically gonna place it right above the hollow of your cheek. So the hollow of your cheek is that area where kind of like right in between where your teeth are that's the hollow of your cheek we're going to apply the bronzer kind of like right above that so i like to start right at my hairline and then i just like to blend down to where my blush is now even though we're just starting out and we're just practicing today i do think applying bronzer in a particular area is kind of important because if you end up applying your bronzer where a contour would go and a contour would go in areas where you want to add definition and maybe enhance a shadow you're not going to be able to do that with a bronzer because your bronzer is very warm toned and I think it will kind of make your face look a little bit off if you're applying a warm tone product in an area where where you naturally have a, a shadow and then when you apply bronzer right above the hollows of your cheek you're already enhancing that natural shadow in your contour anyway so try to place your bronzer like right on the bottom of your cheekbone as opposed to going a little below that because kind of like right up in here is where the contour would go I'm also just going to run this right over my jawline and this is another area where I do think it is kind of important so your your bronzer should go like right on the jawline and if you were putting on a contour it would go underneath the jawline. We're not doing contour today because some people prefer to contour versus bronze. I think bronzer is just a lot more natural looking and I feel like it is easier to apply than a contour because you do have to be like a bit more precise when you're applying a contour like bronzer does have to go like in a certain area but I feel like you can be a bit more free with it when you're blending it out I actually did a video on the difference between bronzer and contour where I kind of go into detail about it so I'll link that if you guys want to check that out I'm also going to put some of the bronzer right along my hairline now this is one area where you can put bronzer or contour in the same place on your forehead but again, I prefer putting bronzer up here just because it's also going to add warmth. If you put a contour shade up here, it's going to add like more of a shadow up here. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush and I'm also going to apply this to my nose. And I feel like this is another area where you can choose between a bronzer or a contour product, but I'm going to be using a bronzer. So for my nose, I like to start right where my um, eyebrows stop or start, I guess, right here. <laughs> and then I'm just going to pat this down to kind of like the center of my nose. And then I like to just go back and forth and just pat it down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side side and then I feel like this always looks a little bit too harsh so I always take whatever I use to apply my foundation whether it would be a brush or a sponge just because it has residual foundation on it and then I just pat right over the bronzer on my nose and it just helps to soften it back out a little bit we're not going to go into eyeshadow today because I feel like eyeshadow should kind of come after you get like the base down. But something else that you can do with your bronzer, you can use it to add a little bit of warmth and dimension to the eye area too. So you can take any type of blending brush and then you're just going to brush it over like the crease area of your eye. And don't worry about being like all super precise with this today. You just concentrate it right there and just blend back and forth in that area. So next we're moving on to mascara and I'm going to be using the Essence Lash Princess False Effects false lash effects mascara so mascara we use that to add volume and length to our lashes I'm just going to show you how I apply my mascara so you definitely want to have a mirror kind of close to your face so you can see what you're doing and I'm going to put the brush kind of like right at the base of my lashes underneath and I'm going to kind of roll the spoolie out as I am pushing it up against my lashes I hope what I'm doing is like coming across on camera and then I like to put just a little bit more like on the tips of my lashes because I feel like this adds a little bit of length and it also helps to like separate the lashes 
and you don't have to put mascara on your lower lashes but for the sake of the video I am going to show you how I put mascara on my lower lashes lately I have been concentrating my mascara like just on the outer part of the lashes just because in the inner part I always get the mascara on my cheeks so I like to just bend my head down as much as I can and then just lightly brush over the lashes and just to lightly coat them but I don't think you need a whole lot of mascara down here just something to help balance out the top lashes a little bit okay we're finishing everything off with lips and I think for beginners if you have no idea what color lipstick looks right on you you have no idea like what finish looks better on you and you just don't know where to start with your lipsticks I would start with Maybelline because they have a million and one colors to choose from as well as every finish that you could possibly think of they have a line of lipsticks called color sensational the creams lipstick and that's the one that I would start out with it comes in like somewhere around 40 or 45 shades and they had everything from a bunch of nudes to a bunch of bold colors but the finish of it is a creamy finish so it's not too matte it's not too glossy it's kind of like right in between and I think that's a good starting point for everyone if you have no idea what shade to start out with I would say just to grab one that looks good to you grab maybe your favorite color or just pick a few because you're gonna have to test them out just to see how they look I'm gonna to be using the shade touchable taupe and if you're interested in trying a nude shade I think this one is very universal so this is what this one looks like I am gonna put this on without a lip liner first just so you can see what it looks like but I think this one looks better on me paired with a lip liner Okay, so that's what this lipstick looks like on me. I feel like I can wear this lipstick just like this if I wanted to, but I usually wear a liner with this one. So if you pick a shade and you think you wanna pair it with a lip liner, I think a good line of lip liners to choose from would be from NYX because it comes in a bunch of different colors and they're only like five dollars so I'm gonna go in with their brown lip liner it's just a typical you know standard brown liner and I'm just going to put this on the outer parts of the lip okay so this is what this lipstick looks like with the liner on you can make your lip liner as bold as you want to but this is pretty much how much I would put on for any lipstick so I'm gonna leave my hair back so that we can have a good look at the finished look so this is what we're looking like for today and like I said earlier I did purposely leave out certain parts of other makeup routines that you might have seen on YouTube but I think what we went over today these are the basics for doing a full face of makeup and if you keep practicing what we did today then you'll figure out like what works for you what doesn't work for you and then you can add on to this as you go along so I really hope that y'all found this video helpful if you did please let me know by giving me a thumbs up if you want some recommendations for high-end products for a makeup starter kit let me know in the comments and I can definitely do that for you so please don't forget to subscribe before you head out today and I hope to see y'all back here for my next video until then take care have a good one y'all bye